now we are going to discuss about the sand winds which is one of the most important deposition features occurs due to the eolian activity due to eolian activity so this this is cause in the eolian areas where the heaps of mounds of sands are found by the deposition of the work of the wind then this is known as the sand winds according to monkhaus a sand winds is a low ridge or hills of drifted sand mainly moved by the wind in the desert regions so monkhaus suggested that there is a low ridge of hill whereas the bagnold in 1933 suggested that it is a mobile heap of sand mobile heap of sand whose existence is independent whose existence is independent on ground from so there are several factors that are influencing the sand winds first is the abundant supply of sand to formation of sand winds there should be abundant supply of sand is important because as you know that about approximately 25% area of the desert area is covered with the sand so in the desert the availability of the sand that will be beneficial for the formation of the sand winds strong wind this strong wind that will be helpful to carry the song sand from the one place to another and the third one is the obstruction which is another most important factor for the formation because obstruction what it's doing when the wind is carry the sands it will create an obstruction and after the sand is deposited in an around the obstruction once the deposition started they will form a sand winds which is however there are different forms of sand winds are found that we will discuss so now we can if we can consider these three factors that is vegetation sand and obstruction wind vegetation and sand suppose the condition of which wind is 100% from here this is scale of wind this is scale of vegetation and this is scale of sand so in that situation what will be happen
So here the longitudinal dune will be developed. Here the transfer dunes will be developed. I'll discuss about this transverse twin and there is a parabolic twin. And this is the area of no dune formation. Now coming to one by one. First one is the longitudinal sand. These longitudinal sand dunes are formed when there is a direction of the winds are parallel to the wind direction. So, the dunes are formed when the wind direction is parallel to the uh, uh, means parallel to the wind direction, and the windward slope is gentle, and the leeward slope is stiff. In case of the longitudinal dunes, transverse sand dunes. These transverse sand winds are formed the direction of the prevailing wind is in transverse direction and most, mostly these are observed in the along the coast or in the margin of the desert coast or margin of desert. the sand dunes are observed. Next come to the parabolic dunes. The parabolic dunes are developed partially stabilized steady terrain, partially stabilized steady terrain. And these are basically use it. This is known as the parabolic twins. Next come to the star twins. Star twins are developed when the wind direction are varying. In different, there is a different wind direction are found. For example, the central part is restops are found, and the twins are found in different tails based on their wind direction and different forms. And the most important winds are developed which is known as the whirlback winds or the also known as the truss whirlback winds. These whirlback winds 
this is a flat top sand ridges of oh, extending parallel to the prevailing wind and very large hurlback winds is known as dras now the most important features that is developed through the sam different uh, the the forms of another form of sand winds which is known as barka barkan is a typical form of the transfer sand winds barkan is a typical form of the transfer sand winds the slip of fish line these are known as the horn so it is a typical form of the transfer sand wind and the term barkan is derived from the turkish word which is an asymmetrical crescent of sand winds which is situated perpendicular to the main direction of the wind so morphologically the volcan having the concave volcan having the gentle inward convex slope concave slope and steep liver concave slope the liver slope that is also known as the slip of face so the most important characteristics of the barkan that is associated with the abundant supply of sand with their range from few meters to 100 meters or more and their width is 10 to 20 times higher than their height the windward slope is gentle that is this slope it is gentle and leeward slope is steep and the fourth one is that the adjoining barkan are growing size and they form a chain of barkan in the desertic areas so now, now coming to the migration of the barkan barkans are generally migrated in the direction of the wind flow
This is due to the fact that the wind blows in absent on the windward side and deposited on the leeward side. So generally small vulcan that migrate from 6 meters per year to 15 meter per year. So it depends on this, the abundance of the sediment uh, or sand supply and the interaction. B.A. Fedorovis has been classified the Barkhan into different categories. First is known as the Barkhan cake. This, the growth of the Barkhan begins with the emergence of small flat cake. which is known as the Barkhan cake. Second, embryonal Barkhan when it reaches 35 to 40 centimeter height the liver side is found contain eddies of the year. This is known as the embryonic barkhan. Half moon barkhan. This half moon barkhan It is gradually grows in and finally transform into the half moon like a barkhan. Pear barkhan. This pear barkhan is gradually grows when the amount of exposure of the sand in deserts is high. So a group of Varkhan is developed, which is known as Pear Varkhan. Fifth, Chain of Varkhan. The mixing of this pair varkhan with one another to form a chain like varkhan. Next is the varkhan ridge. This varkhan ridge are formed when the wind direction is transfers to the formation of the varkhan. So these are the typical forms of varkhans and the dunes formation which is formed due to the depositional work of the wind. Thank you for watching this video.